We live in a world that perpetually strives to break through the next level of technological advancement. The landscape of medicine spared no expense, where new state-of-the-art equipment is seemingly unveiled every year. But with development comes exorbitant amounts of money spent to acquire said technology. What about areas that can only afford the most basic diagnostic tools? What did they use in order to screen and diagnose their patients? Come and find out as we answer those questions in this first installment of BPS. We'll be tackling four universal screening tests, namely complete blood count, the metabolic panel, urinalysis, and the chest x-ray. Feel free to check the timestamps for each test for your own navigation. DBC is a routine screening test for most patients. They are usually ordered for symptoms relating to unusual bleeding, persistent infections, fatigue, and the like. Common findings in their correlations include decreased hemoglobin, which can point towards symptoms of fatigue, weakness, and pallet. Normal platelet counts or thrombocytopenia could explain excessive bleeding. Increased neutrophil count or neutrophilia points towards infection. High lymphocyte counts or lymphocytosis could indicate cancers of the blood such as leukemia. And increased reticulocytes or reticulocytosis are usually associate with increased blood loss. We'll flash the normal values in a standard CBC, so please feel free to pause for your reference. Now we move on to the metabolic panel. Out of all of the tests in this panel, only the following are considered essential in rural settings. The first test in the metabolic panel is FBS or fasting blood sugar. FBS' main indication is to serve as a part of a slate of tests that diagnose diabetes. According to the American Diabetes Association, normal FBS values are between 70 and 100 mg per deciliter. A patient at risk for diabetes is inferred when FBS is between 100 and 125 mg per deciliter. Hence, they are often recommended lifestyle changes and blood sugar monitoring. The BUN and creatinine ratio serves as an indicator to know the status of your renal function. To determine if you are responding to your medications for kidney diseases, and to assess the level of dehydration. Urea is excreted by the renal tubules at a rate that is proportional to the glomerular filtration rate or GFR. Estimated GFR is calculated using serum creatinine and it accounts for individual differences in creatinine levels. The following is the ranges of eGFR values and their significance. And these are the normal values for BUN, creatinine, and the BUN creatinine ratio. If the BUN creatinine ratio is excessively high, there can be two explanations. First, there is a pre-renal obstruction. If renal plasma flow is obstructed in the pre-renal area, BUN naturally rises due to the decrease in GFR. Second, is that there are renal and post-renal causes that directly impair BUN and or creatinine filtration, leading to their accumulation in the serum. On the other hand, a low BUN creatinine ratio implies an underlying condition. Low protein intake, advanced liver illness, sickle cell anemia, hypothyroidism, rhabdomyolysis, kidney injury, and kidney failure can all create a BUN creatinine ratio lower than normal. Next is the AST ALT. AST stands for aspartate transaminase, while ALT stands for alanine transaminase, both of which serve as indicators for the presence of abnormal liver function and or inflammation. The normal values are as follows. Common causes of elevated AST and ALT are viral liver infections such as hepatitis, alcohol abuse, cirrhosis, shock, and heart failure. For fatty liver disease or steatosis, 
ALT is higher than AST. On the other hand, AST is higher than ALT in the case of alcohol abuse. Both AST and ALT are uniformly elevated in the case of viral liver infections. Many drugs may cause elevated ALT and AST in the blood such as paracetamol. Lastly, we're going to take a look at the lipid profile. Tests for lipoprotein cholesterol fractionation are used to separate and measure the different kinds of cholesterol in the blood such as low and high density lipoproteins. Here are the normal values. LDL levels, also known as bad cholesterol, are decreased after acute stress, inflammatory joint illness, and chronic pulmonary disease. Cardiovascular disease is more likely to occur in people with high levels of LDL. On the other hand, HDL, aka good cholesterol, are low in patients with hypertriglyceridemia. Elevated levels are generally seen as a sign of good health, but can also be a sign of chronic hepatitis or heavy drinking. The third test today will be urinalysis. A urinalysis is usually ordered for a patient's routine examination. It aids in the diagnosis of diseases, screening asymptomatic populations for renal or urinary tract disorders, monitoring the progress of a disease as well as the effectiveness of therapy, and to evaluate overall body function. Urinalysis is a relatively safe and non-invasive form of testing. The following are the expected parameters and findings in a normal urinalysis. Feel free to pause the video as you see fit. Lastly, a chest x-ray is one of the most common imaging modalities requested as it can help confirm primary impressions or rule out life-threatening conditions that will alter management priorities. The following are some of the indications for requesting a plain chest radiograph. Suspicion of lung infections is one of the most common indications for requesting a chest x-ray as it helps differentiate between infection of a bacterial, fungal, or viral cause and is especially important for detecting infection with SARS-CoV-2 virus. Abnormal fluid accumulation can also be visualized using an x-ray, but further tests are needed to confirm whether the fluid is blood, pus, or just pleural fluid. Even heart failure findings can be visualized, and these usually include a constellation of findings such as cardiomegaly, pulmonary vessel cephalization, pulmonary edema, and even pleural effusion. Patients with chronic conditions may present with symptoms like chronic cough, night sweats, hemoptysis, and unexplained weight loss that can help differentiate between an infection like tuberculosis or a worse prognosis of lung malignancy. A chest radiograph can also be requested for emergency situations such as motor vehicle accidents, gunshot or stab wounds, which can present with a buildup of gas in the pleural space termed pneumothorax. Presence of fractures in the ribcage can also be readily seen. Not all conditions indicated for radiographic imaging can be discussed in this video. Therefore, we encourage you as students to further your knowledge especially with the aid of actual patient encounters during your hospital exposure.